Hi babes, welcome back to my channel. It's me Kagem. Okay, so today I was talking to a really, really good friend of mine who lives in the UK. She's a dear friend and we were talking about luxury shopping. She loves luxury brands like me and we were talking about the Hermes Birkin and Kelly and she had some really controversial opinions and I was like, okay girl, like, can I share this on my YouTube channel? She was like, yeah, sure, just don't like put my details on blast. She's very private. So I was like, that's fine. But she's like, she's got a legit luxury collection. So I thought her comments were definitely worth sharing. So we were talking about like the whole obsession with Birkins right now. And she was just like, people are flexing and capping that they are buying Birkins in store. She was like, I'm sorry. I just don't believe that a lot of these people are getting them in store. And we were talking about that thing because I think that's become huge now. I think a lot of people um, on Instagram, YouTube specifically, and TikTok are kind of presenting that they're buying Birkins from the boutique itself, but they're actually buying it from resellers. And just for the record, because I feel like sometimes I come across, um, one of you commented, you were like, oh, why do you look down on people who buy pre-loved? I don't look down on anyone who buys pre-loved. And I think if I came across that way, um, I definitely didn't mean to. Um, for me personally, I just wouldn't buy something pre-loved. I just like new things. I like newness. But um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with buying pre-loved if that's your bag. And my friend is the same. She just pr prefers to buy new. So we were talking about the whole culture of the whole Birkin thing right now and how everyone is obsessed with Birkins on Instagram. Like it's it's kind of trending again and i'm in my early 30s and i remember when victoria was like when victoria beckham was really like the celebrity buying birkin she was that b okay to buy birkin she really kind of set off the trend and now we're seeing celebrities everywhere you know cardi b we're seeing yaya mayweather who's floyd mayweather's daughter she's really been showing off um for those of you who like hip-hop i love hip-hop i love trap music the city girls they're always buying them I do think, though, that a lot of people are pretending. So I want to talk about a few things. I remember a few months ago, I saw this really interesting comment on the past blog. It was from an anonymous commenter, but this the way the comment was written, you could tell that this person was an insider. They said they used to work in the entertainment industry, and they said a lot of celebrities have replicas. Just the way she was like writing her comment, you could tell that this person wasn't capping. They were absolutely telling the truth. And I kind of believe it. I do think that there are some celebrities. I'm not necessarily saying Cardi buys fakes. I don't actually think Cardi's collection is fake. Um, I, she's one person who I actually think her collection is legit. But I do think that there are many like people who have a lot of clout and who are famous who are buying fakes. So my friend was also agreeing with me on that, but she was like, okay, let's put that to the side for a second. She's like, what about the people who are buying Birkins, but pretending that they're buying them in store? If you're enjoying this conversation, please make sure you watch all the way until the end because I have some other things to talk about, about how people are treating luxury shopping YouTubers. And I have some important things to say about that. So watch all the way till the end and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit that bell. The crux of what my friend is saying is that she feels like they're people who are pretending that they're buying in store, but they're actually buying from um, luxury resellers like Privé Porte and um, Cellier Knightsbridge, for example. And I was kind of like, man, I don't know. Cause it's hard, you know, you don't wanna accuse someone of being a liar. But she was like, these girls are lying. A lot of them are lying. And I was like, I don't know, man, it was tough. We were, we were talking on a video call and it was just really interesting just talking to her because she was like, I am convinced they're lying, okay? And she's legit, like she is very successful. She's got a beautiful um, handbag collection. And she was just like, I don't believe that the people who are flexing about buying in store are telling the truth. This is my take. I think my friend is kind of, <laughs> I was telling her on the phone, I was like, you're kind of harsh, but I think there's a kernel of truth in what she's saying. I do think that there are some people who are absolutely pretending um, so they can do it for views. I think that those videos are quite obvious which ones those are. I do think though that there are many influencers, YouTubers, and just general shoppers who have been lucky enough to buy in person. When you watch those videos and people say, 
they bought directly from the store. You can always kind of tell who's telling the truth. You just feel the honesty coming out of the video. Whereas I feel like the people who are capping, they make it, they make it seem like you're the one who can't get a back in. Like, oh, well, I didn't have a purchase history and I got a back in. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Some of it, the people kind of show off about it a little bit hard to me. Some of it seems unlikely. It's not saying that you're a liar completely. There are definitely some people who've bought back ins and who haven't had to, you know, go through the rigmarole of the Hermes game. But many people do have to go through the rigmarole. So there's an article on Perspop. It was really interesting. And she talked about how you have to basically play the game. And this woman is horrifically successful, obviously, Perspop herself. Like, she's got Bear Birkins, Bear Kellys, and she knows many filthy rich women who have the same. So I feel like when Monica writes something on the Perspop, I think we need to take it very seriously. She talks about the whole culture of quota bags. I just want to pull up something that Monica wrote on here. I'll post the link to the description post the link to the description I'm sorry I'll post the article in the description I don't know what's going on with my English at the moment I've definitely been struggling speaking English even my husband is laughing at me he's like what's going on with you girl um so here we go so she wrote this article called how to get two or more Hermes Birkins or Kelly's in a year it is really really detailed I'm going to post it in the description so you can read the entire thing she talks about the culture of quota bags at Hermes she says, a quota bag means a Birkin or Kelly. A Mezzis policy generally is that a customer may only purchase one quota bag per semester. I love that. A Mez has two semesters. The first running from January to June, the second running from July to December. However, there are whisperings about a Mez changing the policy and now offering two quota bags per calendar year. Ooh, okay. That means you'll be able to purchase two bags anytime during the year back to back, but you cannot buy another Birkin or Kelly for the remainder of the year. And this is what I'm saying. There are all these juicy, like insider things from people who have actually purchased in store and who have purchased history. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that all people who say that they're buying directly um, without purchase history are lying. But what I, what I am saying is some of those stories just don't come across like they're real, some of them. And my friend is who, <laughs> she's the person who inspired this video because she was just like, people are lying, they are liars. I'm like, no, some people are telling the truth. They've been lucky to buy in store. Some people are capping. Um, so that they can look like, okay, well, you have to buy, you know, Collier de Chans, you have to buy, you know, wallets and stuff. And I got offered directly. There are some people who are capping, to be honest. And whether that's for views, to get followers or for clout, I don't know. I do think it's quite strange uh, either way. There are a few other little things here that Monica said. Um, purchasing mul multiple quota bags a year, obviously you can buy resale and she said you can also buy it from the boutique maybe using your husband's account and this sounds legitimate um i've seen many youtubers and instagrammers send their husbands and boyfriends in there and they've been successful to score a kelly or to score a birkin another strategy which i mentioned in one of my older videos that i had read which apparently worked at a period of time was to go to sort of more harder to find a mess boutique so the faubourg store is obviously the mothership for the brand in paris so maybe if you go there you're not going to be successful but maybe if you go to i'm guessing i think Hermes do have a boutique in monaco and i think they do have one in Cannes. maybe if you try the monaco one could you be successful could you be successful in Cannes? you don't know i mean those ones that are a little bit um off the beaten track those kind of luxury boutiques could you be successful there who knows? Maybe you could, on a punt, give it a crack and then we could see what happens. So she also talks about, um, besides your, um, your significant other, you could also ask to make a special custom order. She calls it a special order here. She says it normally takes a six month time period to create that could also be a really cool way i think asking for a custom special order um to see if you can kind of get in hermes as good graces if you're ready to play the hermes game not everyone wants to play the hermes game some of some of you don't want to i can totally understand why it has to be exhausting and tiring she also says something super interesting here she says that um 
she's okay this is i love this she says when traveling abroad to other locales it's believed if you spend close to the equivalent of the cost of a birkin or a kelly a quota bag will magically appear from the back room hmm Although the essay may say when you arrive, we're sorry, madam, <laughs> we have no stock at this time. I like how she wrote that. This can all change once you've completed your shopping. Don't be afraid to ask for what you want. Just be strategic when you ask. She's spot on. This connects with something I've heard from someone who's close to me who used to work at Chanel. It's all about timing when you're in these luxury boutiques. It is clear to me that um, obviously a Birkin and a Kelly are very expensive. So if you're someone who's going to probably buy, you know, scarves or you're going to buy some of the Hermes, you know, homeware or maybe also going to buy clothing, you are going to get close to the cost of a Birkin and a Kelly. Let's assume you buy a Collier de Chien, you buy an Hermes wallet, a Kelly wallet, for example, or you buy, you know, some homeware, you buy some scarves, you buy a blanket, you'll definitely be creeping up there in price, if not exceeding it. That could give you a chance um, to qualify to get a Birkin or a Kelly, and it might magically appear, as Monica writes here. <laughs> this is so great. I'm going to post the full... Um, Article in, the article in the description is absolutely worth a read. It's really, really great. So I think she raises a really good point. So you can see from the details that she's added, some of the things that people are saying about buying directly from Hermes don't really add up because they do have that system, as she says, per semester, which maybe they're changing. Uh, she also talks about how right now they're also going to be changing more things. Like they have this, um, I think like, system computer system that they're apparently going to change she also references that i actually think it's going to be a little bit harder put c19 to the second for to, to the side for a second i can't speak english anymore i do think that we're going to see like a change a mess of noticing that people are reselling a lot a mess are tired of it um they need to get a handle on it i definitely think right now is not the time to make the birkin or the kelly more accessible Right now is the time to sell it, and I hate this phrase, but you know what I'm saying, to sell it to the right people. I absolutely think some people are telling the truth that they've been able to buy directly, that's fine. Um, but I do think that my friend is right in kind of side-eyeing some people like, please, you know, you got that from Privé Porte. Stop, okay? So I think that she does have a fair point about that, and I, I think that's fine. And, and just to... Um, reiterate my point i don't have a problem with anyone buying things pre-loved i don't have a problem with that my friend and i were discussing that we both prefer new things but i think it's absolutely fine to buy pre-loved i think it's just interesting why some people are pretending that they're buying new birkins when they have clearly bought something pre-loved i do think that's very strange it's very odd to me i don't understand that i'd love to know what you guys think drop me some comments tell me what you think tell me what you think of the article and what you think of my friend and me and our conversation make sure that you keep watching and don't forget to subscribe recently i've noticed on my channel i've been getting a lot of hate comments at the moment which is quite strange because i don't have a big channel and there are a few of you who are very loyal subscribers and you support my videos i'm very grateful for that but i've been getting a lot of hate comments on different videos of mine so i just wanted to address that um because i think it's kind of interesting I've noticed it on a lot of other luxury shopping YouTube channels that are way bigger than mine. So uh, I received some comments about how I look, about my hair, about my face, about my hair's ugly, my wig is bad for me, my wig is ugly, they don't like my hair, they don't like, someone said that the lipstick I wear is too pale for my dark skin. Um, all these kind of weird critical comments that are not necessary. You can absolutely share constructive thought. If you have video suggestions for me, please feel free to leave a comment or send me a DM on Instagram or send me an email. I absolutely would love to hear from you. If you have a video suggestion, if you have like constructive like feedback, by all means. But I feel like when it goes under the belt, like that's where people need to calm down and kind of just relax. You know, so I... I've heard people complain like, oh, like my favorite YouTuber has stopped making videos. Well, maybe that person has stopped making videos because they're constantly being slagged off all the time. By the way, there's nothing wrong with a critical comment. We're not going to agree. I love hearing different comments in videos. And if I like the, the Fendi Sunshine Shopper tote and you don't like it, if you're like, I don't like this bag, that's fine. I'm happy to hear from you. I'm gonna vibe with you. I'm gonna you know chill with you in the comments. But I feel like when you're making comments about how someone looks, about their hair, about their looks, and 
that is when it just kind of gets a bit weird and creepy. Like, why are you worried about the way that I look? I just find that so strange. And normally, when I see my comment notifications, I get them in the morning because most of the people who comment tend to live in the US and because of the time difference, when I'm getting up to go to work, I see the comments. And um, this isn't to say like, oh, I've seen these comments have ruined my day. It's not ruined my day because I don't do YouTube for money. I feel like if I did this as my job, it probably would affect me more, but because I'm doing this because I enjoy shopping, I love shopping, to me it's just like, oh, someone wrote something rude, nasty, I can either remove the comment or I can just ignore it. So sometimes I remove comments that are like really rude, sometimes I ignore them, um, sometimes I'm just like, oh, whatever, this person, like, what's their problem? So I was looking at this <laughs> video from a YouTuber called Cindy at A Heated Mess. She posts mainly about Louis Vuitton. She used to work there. She's so good. She's got a great channel. And what I like about her the most is the way she responds in comments. As I've told you, I've worked with influencers before in my digital marketing career. I can always tell an influencer who's about it and one who's not about it. She's about that life and she's really, really brilliant. Um, she gets a lot of nasty comments from people who are like, you know, Louis Vuitton stands and just weirdos who are like, oh, your, your info isn't accurate. I know that, that this has changed at LV. She just responds and she's like, thank you so much for your comment. And she puts that emoji like this. And when I saw some of her responses, I was like, you know, I love that response. It's such a great response because it's like, you're hating. I don't, I wish I cared. Goodbye. You know, because it's not a constructive critique. And that's, that's my point. Another um, YouTuber who I really like, um, who's very successful is M Sheldon. I like how she responds to people on one of her videos. Someone was hating on a shopping vlog. They were like, oh, I can't believe that you're posting these shopping vlogs. I'm going to be unsubscribing. And she was like, I, I'm so happy for you to unsubscribe. I can't wait for you to unsubscribe. Have an amazing life. Goodbye. <laughs> Another great response. So I haven't responded like that. I haven't had any sweet, sarcastic responses like that. But I think I'm just kind of making just like a general comment about um, the way we kind of you know, comment on people's channels. Like, let's keep it as cute as possible, if possible. If you have a constructive critique, by all means, I, I want to improve the quality of my videos. I don't do this full time, so I, I can't sit the whole day thinking, how do I make my videos super, super amazing? Because I don't do this full time, and this is something I'm just doing because I find it fun, you know? But if you have a constructive critique, please share your constructive critique. You can write it in a comment. You can send me a DM on Instagram. But I feel like making really nasty comments about the way I look and my, my physical look, like you don't like my wig. If you don't like my wig, that's your problem. I like my wig. I'm going to wear my wig for as long as I want to. I have other videos where I'm not wearing my wig. Okay, I've got my hair out. I've got other videos where I had braids. I had other videos where I had another wig on. You know, you can never satisfy everyone. So I don't, I don't feel like comments about how someone looks are like helpful. I think they can actually be really nasty and cruel. And I think we need to chill out with that. When I told my husband this, he was like, he was like, you can't take criticism from someone who doesn't have a profile photo of themselves. Like show your profile photo so we can see what you look like and what your wig looks like. So I just want to put that out there because some of these um, comments that people are leaving on a lot of luxury influencers channels are kind of getting nasty, they're getting cruel, they're becoming really rude. And I know what many of you will say, you might reach out to me and be like, okay, well, don't, you know, rub it off, whatever, forget about it. No, yeah, you can rub it off, you can forget about it. But I've spent, I've had like two weeks of a lot of hate comments on a lot of my videos, a lot of my older videos, some of my newer videos as well. And I remove most of them. Some of them I've left up because I'm just like, okay, whatever, I don't care. I'm not responding to you anyway. Most of you who know my channel, you know I always respond and I will always respond to you and I'm always like interacting with everyone who comments on my channel pretty much. But I do think that we need to just tone it down a little bit, you know? If you don't have something nice to say, don't say it. If you have a constructive critique, I want to hear from you. I want my channel to grow. I want people to subscribe. Um, but there's no need to be nasty, making critiques about how someone looks. I mean, the person who critiqued my lipstick, like, that lipstick is too pale for you. I'm a black woman. I'm going to wear whatever I want to wear. And no one's going to check me and tell me that I can't wear the lipstick that I want to wear because I don't have a color complex about my skin. I'm happy with how I look. And that's that. And that's on God. Okay. So I think that we need to just take a step back and relax a little bit. You know, let's not be too critical and let's not go below the belt with comments to people on people's channels because 
this person is making content and videos for you to enjoy. There's no need to go under the belt. If you have a constructive thought, I will be more than happy to hear from you so that I can improve my videos. But don't come after my wig, my hair, my looks, my lips, my skin, you know, telling me that my videos are silly and they're stupid. And, you know, I got a, a comment on my Cactus de Cartier video someone was going off on me saying it was like 12 minutes of their life they wasted i was like oh well you wasted 12 minutes and you still gave me a view so what do you think about that anyway guys please make sure that you subscribe to my channel hit the bell if you like honest views on luxury shopping and high street shopping so next week is the last week of a lot of videos from me in february i'm going to be slowing down my schedule a little bit it'll be two to three videos a week i did say in january i'll be doing a video every single day so i hope to see you guys next week um in my videos and don't forget you can reach out to me via email or instagram dm i'm very active on instagram and via email so yeah can't wait to see you guys in my next video